Welcome to Talking Art. I'm Jane Treger and we're here at the Deerfield Arts Bank and we're continuing our conversation with local artists. Today we have Greta Kessler. Uh, before we start the interview though, I'd like to remind you that if you have comments or questions or anything you'd like to say to me, please email talkingart at fcat.tv. And without further ado, Greta Kessler, welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here in this wonderful paper cut art show. Well, that's a nice segue because we are actually surrounded by the work of seven artists who are paper cut artists. And uh, it's quite a unique experience. Many, many different styles. And Greta is one of these seven artists on display during this exhibit. And so we're going to find out not only all about Greta, but also about how paper cut, how p paper is cut in the traditional oh. paper cut methods. But Greta's story is much longer than just paper cuts. Can you please tell me, first of all, where you were born and how you got to this region of the United States? Okay. Or this, this uh, neighborhood, let's put it that way. This wonderful neighborhood. I was living in Newport, Rhode Island, which is a beautiful place but I was lonely and I decided I needed to be with half of my children in Northampton. And I found a little house on the same street as my daughter, a mid-50s house. Quite a special That place. is where I'm stuck in the mid-20, what is it, the 20th century? Mid-20th century. Mid-20th century, no. I am stuck there. No, and I love it, no. I like being here, and I love being in this gallery. Thank you. Uh, so you're born in Newport, Rhode Island. Right. I think you're the only person I know. Can't you hear Rhode Islandese when I speak? I don't know what that sounds like. I'm it sorry. It sounds like me. Okay, I, now I know. <laughs> now I know. So um, there's a very famous school in Rhode Island. Is that perchance the school you went to? Rhode Island School of Design? Yes. Yes. Can you tell me what you studied there? I was going to study graphic arts and it was during World War II, and it was really almost a girls' school. The guys started coming back, and I realized how truly competitive it would be in advertising design, and I took the opportunity to become an apprentice jewelry designer, working in the summer learning how to render designs, and then I went to the factory and went online, learning how to solder. I learned every manufacturing technique in what was the center of costume jewelry in the world, in Providence, Rhode Island. So this is a book which I'm probably going to have donated eventually. To, uh, to RISD? Well, I don't know where it'll go, but uh, uh, these are some of the designs that I've done. Uh, they're called lines. Lines meaning a theme of a certain style, uh, like this is repeated. Uh, linear metal, which uh, you had to de develop a whole line. I see meaning, the date here. It's 1954. Uh, yes, meaning the whole line, meaning earrings, necklace, brooch, and bracelet, so that every design had to have all of those. And uh, so, are these what we're looking through here? Is this from your school or from your professional life? This is when I became a jewelry designer. I had my own line. At first, I was just uh, rendering sketches for the man who trained me at the factory. And uh, is this watercolor that you use here? Uh, it's Prismacolor crayons with oh. white paint underneath to make the rhinestones glitter. Oh. I mean, there's techniques for rendering, and oh. uh, I love doing bold things. But I go from one extreme to another in everything, delicate to bold. There's a delicate. So in, in the school design, I continued at night, even though I went two years day school and uh, five years night school. And I learned all manufacturing techniques, stamping and casting and working with the model makers. It was very, very interesting. I only learned a few Italian words, mostly. <laughs> oh, was it, was it a largely Italian business? Oh, yes. Business? Yes, Bongiorno is the only one I picked up. Oh, well, <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's, a, that's okay. Could have learned a, that's learned okay. a language. So, um, 
So you still do jewelry, but now you're making it. This is well, design, and somebody else is making it. Right. And this you make, like the one you're wearing right I, now. You get to love beads and collecting beads in traveling, especially some of these are from the Middle East. This is from Turkmenistan. This is from Yemen. Uh, Yemenite brides used to wear a whole necklace of these silver beads that are very, very difficult to make and collecting odds and ends. I mean, I used to go to New York and get this ivory. I got ivory before it was banned. And just collecting, this is a handmade uh, glass bead uh, that I got in Chicago. So wherever I go, I find fascinating beads to put together. And the, the large one you wear? This is amber from, uh, uh, and this is, this is, uh, I'm not sure what this is. It looks like amber, but these are old carnelian. These are silver from the southwest, these silver beads. This is also from the southwest. The Indians make uh, breastplates out of these uh, bone beads from animals. Greta, you have your jewelry in the gift shop here. And one time you were fixing something, and the string or something broke, and oh, the right. beads went scattering. And I got this email from you saying, I'm missing three beads. I think, how could she possibly know she's missing three beads? Because and when, now I see, with the care I, that you choose your beads, you know exactly what you have. When I started to reassemble it, the certain beads were missing. I mean, I could have redesigned it, but I didn't have those beads. We found them, I, didn't we? Yes. I did not have, in my thousands of beads, I did not have those beads. So Luckily, I didn't vacuum. Oh. And I found them. I found them all. Good thing. Yes, good thing. So, um, so the pieces that you have in the shop, do you think they're like this or a little no, simpler? They're not like this at no, all. No, no. They're more like this. Right. Right. But I, I bought four of these uh, fused beads. I visit my daughter in Chicago, and we always go to the bead stores. So um, the different colors. I like uh, asymmetric. Asymmetric design. <laughs> Asymmetric. Asymmetric. Yeah. And this was part of a belt. I could the, only afford to buy one the, link. Uh huh. And these are handmade chains. For, for local? Local? No, they're from uh, the Middle East. Uh huh. So let's see. So we have jewelry making. Right. And and you worked in your in your professional life as a jewelry designer for years and years. Yes. And I wanted to run away at it, but I, I, I wanted to run away from that because it got to be too monotonous. Monotonous. I, want, I had to start other things. I've always been a craftsperson, so I started doing all kinds of things, like paper cutting I've been doing all my life, and weaving, and woodworking, and sewing, and... Well, let's Anything, go you can, basketry, I've been let, doing let, all those things. Let's go to embroidery. Okay. And is that the right order, do you think? Yeah. And, um, so here we have rather unusual and complicated, and here's another example here. That's an amulet. But it's embroidery. Right. Right. So over here, can you tell us about the cushion that I'm holding? There was a competition that the Klutznik Museum in Washington, D.C., a collection of Judaica art uh, to be shown. And I sent a drawing, and they accepted the drawing. Amazing. And uh, then I worked on this, got it ready for the deadline. I uh, see I see leather. I see hanging wire. Right. Not something I'd like to lean against, frankly. Well, the theme is. And I see real embroidery with threads. And I see, I think, felt. Uh, there's all kinds of materials. The theme is the Israelites leaving Egyptian slavery, but also tying in with the Russian exodus uh, during the 1950s and going to Jerusalem. And Next year in Jerusalem is the theme. And spring, pearls. That, that, that border is spring, breaking through the barbed wire into a shelter of peace, which is what the rainbow uh, design. Sukkot Shalom is the, sh 
You, did you weave of peace. this? No, but in the Bible there is a little passage about checker work. So when I saw that, I felt it was the appropriate backing for this pillow. So tell us. It's a, a leaning bit. pillow for the Passover Seder. Tell us about this piece. Well, I do uh, New Year's cards every year, and I printed on fabric that particular design, and then I decided I'm going to make an amulet out of it uh, by so, stitching. So I see something that looks like silver-coated leather. It's uh, called pleather. Pleather. Ah, pleather. Plastic leather. Plastic leather, I see. And The and rainbow embroidery. is a, a rainbow. That's a rainbow. There's a lot of symbolism in all these things. Yes. And then, and then um, the little squares are an old form of an amulet, little squares that used to have numbers or letters in Hebrew. So this one has it says new year. Good year. Right. Good year. Good year. So you still do this kind of work, right? Well, it's hard. Uh, my hands are, ah. well, I'm, I'm limiting myself. So, but you do drawing all the time, I'm right? Always drawing. I see yes. all these notebooks. Right. So you're constantly taking notes on the things that you see. Well, I I sketch when I'm driving in the car. Or Not when you're I, driving. No, when we're driving in the car. <laughs> and I know a lot of these are places I've visited, and I've done paper cuts of them, like this one. I, there's a paper cut of of this that my daughter has. This one. Yeah. This, uh, so you use this for as your a stepping your off point. Stepping off point. Uh -huh. Right. Good. And this one is beautiful. This is a just a mountain scene. Right. Because it's like almost nothing, and it's all there. The extreme of way I draw, which is fussy, 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 and intricate, is expressed differently when I have a brush. This is a ink and brush. It's a brush pen. Yeah. Brush pen, yes. I Which know, is I very know. expressive. Yes, it is very expressive. Yeah, but what's interesting is uh, the mountains in Israel and the mountains in the United States out west are very similar. <laughs> I thought I was, I thought I was in Israel when I woke up from a nap in the car in Colorado. <laughs> in Colorado. Oh, this is quite a different look. This right. is very graphic in a way. Yeah, yeah? that's from my kibbutz house. Uh -huh. When I visited my daughter. So let's let's see. Now we we've we've gone through these notebooks and we've done the jewelry. So now I see which one would you like to talk about first? The 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 um, the paper cut. Which came first, the paper cut or the origami? Well, the man who trained me as a designer taught me some origami, but I forgot it until I went to Japan, okay. and somebody showed me how to do the crane. And then I started doing origami and going to conventions. It, if you like puzzles, origami is, I mean, this looks complicated, but it's only two pieces that are repeated. And it's when you get a class or a design or a book, um, it's like solving a puzzle. If you do word puzzles, I mean, this is, to me, more fun than word puzzles because I'm playing with paper. Well, let, let's see now. Um, over in the exhibit, we have um, a lot of paper cuts. And we also have, here in front of us, some collages. Where does the collage fit into the chronology of your work? It's playing with paper. OK, so all the paper stuff. So let, let's, let's look at the, some of these collages. Um, this, is a, this is an architectural detailed space with an arch. Is this is a real place that you're looking at, right? Yeah, it's probably from one of these sketches. Like, uh, you know, I did the paper cut of this one, but there is a sketch in one of these books like that. Uh huh. And, but but there's a freedom that I see in your choice of materials. Are you making the paper that I see, or are you finding paper that is that is that color? You asked a wicked question because uh -huh. I have drawers full of paper. I have too many drawers full of paper. So you keep drawers that says all the grays are in here? Yes. Uh-huh. Oh. So this was the gray. Red, orange, the, yellow, the all through the color palette, yes. Uh-huh. And over here, this came from the green drawer. <laughs> well, that's a place that we visited. It's Antigua in the Caribbean. 
So did you make a drawing of this first and then go back and do a collage? I probably had a sketch. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. I mean, that's when we went sailing in the Caribbean a lot, but uh, I think I had a picture from the hill overlooking this English harbor in Antigua. Is there paint in there too? No, what happens when you wet the tissue, it bleeds like paint. It becomes. Oh, I see. It becomes uh, another color through the layers. Uh huh. On and wrinkly too, like layered paint. Right. So those clouds are made out of white paper. Probably. Uh -huh. Yeah. I can't see from here. <laughs> the yeah, it's you know, it's one of the. It's a. There's completely different scenes, you know. Mm -hmm. This little one over here is. Um, it looks like it's done from f with photo photographs. Right. Is that what it I have looking? a friend who is a photographer, and she gives me things. She throws things. She throws things at me. <laughs> she gives me things that she doesn't want to keep. So I just. So they become your I, scraps. Right. That's fantastic. Right. So, so you this, made a whole scene out of some discarded photographs. Photographs. Right. But cut up. Yeah. And in, in, in to reproduce what you want rather than what she wanted. Right. That's quite wonderful. So tell me a little bit about the one right below it here that says, it says Happy New Year and Greta and Irving Kessler. So this is a graphic art, a very graphic design that you made in order to make a New Year's card? Yes, exactly. And when I visit my children in uh, Israel, there are date plantations which are so beautiful. Just, they're elegant, they're like, I don't know how to describe it. I, I used to have a wonderful word. They're, they're like regal. regal trees all in a row. And um, I, I'm always cutting or drawing them. So I decided that year I would focus on those trees. And I cut the paper and made the card. I re had it reduced so there would be a card. So what am, what the, the the items that I'm looking at here look they they look silk screened are they Yes But I, do they did they start off silk screened these two flowery items here the, Or were they paper cuts They this started off as a paper design very abstract floral and I decided I'm going to play with making a silk screen print, but not the usual way with touche and glue or uh, lacquer stencil, which is cut like the paper cuts are cut, the cut so that you have positive and negative. And the, um, each color is a separate paper stencil so that you have limited print uh, results because a paper resists against the silk it's going to wear out and it becomes less defined. This has got are, sharp edges. Are you doing the silk screening? Yes, I, mm -hmm. I, I used to like to, I like printmaking. Are you still doing it? Uh, no, my son made me th give away everything when I moved. Is this the one you love? This is the one I love. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I complained. I complained a few weeks ago. I found a small silk screen. Uh -huh. Frame that okay. I, I, I wish could, you back back into business because but this is. Gorgeous. I used to, I used to print with oil-based inks, and now they don't use those. Right. They use water-based inks, okay. which is nice. So this is a paper stencil, and um, and it's very abstract. You can see, I can be very literal, or I can be not so defined. So th this one on the left, perhaps because of the blue, reminds me not necessarily in the shapes, but just conceptually of Matisse and his right. paper cuts. I, I told you that I was inspired by him. I used to cut paper since I was a little child. And this one was designed as a uh, placemat. So I had them... Uh, Replicated. No, I, I printed them all and I went and had them uh, laminated. Laminated. So I don't have any left. I've given them or sold them all. This is I all I have wonderful. left. <laughs> I, I, I would, I would gladly have a set of um, of placemats that look like that. That's well, playful shapes, Beautiful. which is leading. Okay, so, so leading to this, right? So, 
So paper cutting. Now, we have several different styles up uh, hanging here and behind us as well. So we have here two paper cuts and a collage. Let's talk about paper cuts. These, this is what we have predominantly hanging here. And uh, I see that you've brought some materials here to show us how you do it. And we actually have the finished piece right here. Right. So can you talk us through this? Well, this is historical amulet for the house. And I traced this. And I transfer this to the back of rag paper or acid-free paper. And I cut with either a scissors or a knife. Well, wait, slow down a second. Let me get so, the steps. So <clears throat> the one you have behind you, that one, that is a drawing. This is a print from actually a three-dimensional amulet that I have uh, in so the you, house. So you've, you've I've made a tracing. That, I've a tracing. made a tracing of it. Then, and, and you then, got it to the size you wanted. Yes, and I transfer it then you on the back. It. it has to be reversed on the back because I like the front to be clean. You can't tell that I've had any drawing on the back. And I cut from the back after this is transferred with a paper that's a transfer paper, like a carbon paper. And I it's cut with a surgical knife, which is very sharp. Does not wear off out like a an exacto. Here, here. Uh, this surgical knife. I when I did a b paper cut almost as big as a door, uh, I had to keep changing my blades with the exacto blades. So the surgical knife is honed differently. Right. And I don't have to keep changing blades. Oh, very good so, to know that. Yes. So where does one get a surgical knife? I order them from a couple of companies. And I see you brought some scissors, too. Is there anything right. you want to tell us about scissors? Well, for big shapes, which I'm going to cut and show you, uh, I use a big scissors. You pick the color, and I'm going to cut a shape for you. Oh, OK. So maybe we'll, we'll see how far we can get. I brought, um, you, I brought you a winter garden. So I'm picking a color to add to this? Yes. Oh. Okay, how about, how about, I don't know, let's see, how about, um, how about this yellow here, this, okay. this goldenrod? Basically, you're turning the paper. You keep cutting, and you turn the paper. Yeah. The scissors is always going the way it cuts, and the paper turns to get the shapes. No, and sometimes it's easier to put the scissors on the other side of the paper than where, uh, you know, it depends on how tricky the, the shape is that, that you're cutting. Now, Matisse used a scissors that was about 20 inches long. And he was cutting shapes for the Vance Chapel from his bed. And they didn't have colored paper like I have colored paper, you know. He had an assistant painting, painting those big, big sheets. The whole chapel was designed from his bed. And um, It's extraordinary because uh, he had them pasted up on the wall. Yes? Yes. All right, so you'll have, you have to glue that down yourself. <laughs> I have to glue it down myself. Okay. But I think we need a little center, something okay, in contrast. We'll do that afterwards. OK, it needs a little contrast on, uh, on top. Okay. So what we didn't spend much time talking about is uh, the origami. Thank you very much. This is. Superb, and this one here, um, well, you can see the you can see the finished item um, hanging, and that uh, it's a very strong contrast between the white and the blue. 
But the origami, tell me about, tell me about a little bit about this. And this. this. And well, that. not only is it paper, it's color. And it's uh, also puzzle solving. I did a necklace with 300 and I don't know, 170 pieces with this model. Now I can't remember how to do it, but <laughs> the thing is that it's, um, it's fun to assemble the color and make the forms. And uh, I love sharing and teaching. I taught a neighbor how to make this wedge. This is assembled by little little shelves here. That, oh my goodness. Isn't that cute? It's really easy to do. It's just being it held looks, together. It looks complicated, but it and isn't. And this? So it's, it's problem solving this is a with necklace? paper. This is a necklace. Every, Can Mad Tudor put it up? Please do. Wear it in good health. <laughs> Every time I went to origami convention in New York, I would design a new necklace. So I have these oh, weird, this weird forms, you know, and it looks great on you. <laughs> so let again, me see. color, color, paper, form. You know, it's uh, paper is is it's, paper isn't always cheap, is it? Well, I save paper when. <laughs> I understand. I I, we, no, we, we've got your drawers. I can. I would love to see your drawers of many no, colors. No, I don't think so. No, <laughs> but these papers don't look like they're sort of salvaged. They look like you. They're they're origami papers. Origami papers. Right. Right. I have drawers full. Well, so, so 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 let me see. Let's see if we've covered everything and what I have not asked you. Well, in this particular one, it looks like you put you cut out as you just showed us. But you also layer. Yes, that's the uh, more the Polish style of layering, which I, I like the simpler effects, but this was fun. This was quirky, um, funny fowl. Funny feathers, I think you funny call it. Feathers, funny right? feathers, right? Uh, funny feathers. But I wanted to do too. I wanted to do a circus uh, thing with horses and a merry-go-round. I have to do those someday. Okay, so this is okay, and so, and so, uh, which work are you still continuing besides the paper cutting? I'm still making jewelry. I and paper cutting could quite be, could be quite expensive. I know that you do serographs or digital prints of your paper cuts, right? I used to do printmaking, but I'm now doing bookmaking. I signed this is up. An, this is an easy book to read. <laughs> it is. I'm, I signed up for a more advanced uh, book uh, making class. I love the class that you had here. Really, everybody was so intense. Well, you're going to be teaching a class in paper cutting as well, right? Right, for children. Yes. I hope there are people and, who have and signed the, and up. You know, I, I, don't, I hesitate to say things that are current and only current, but the, the Quadrangle Museum has an exhibit now on origami. Yes. When yeah. do we go? Yes, we have to go. <laughs> so um, I, I think you showed me a, 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 a collage that is not here that I thought was extraordinary. It was a portrait. And I would like to encourage you to do more of those collages because you have a real eye for them and you have all those drawers of paper. Well, I have unfinished work that I have to finish first. So They're uh, waiting for me. <laughs> Can you, t can you briefly tell me the difference between serograph and silk screening? It's the same thing. Ah, oh, thank you. Seri is silk. Oh, I see. Yeah. Ah, oh, you put it in another language and it becomes fancy or something. Well, that's the formal word for print, uh, that kind of printing. And it became an art form in the 1930s, I think. S serographs. Uh, yeah, printmaking became in the 20s. important. Do you think it came out of graphic arts and posters? I, I think that uh, since the French were doing uh, a lot of art posters, a lot of the French artists were doing art posters. And posters uh, have become collectible because they're done by great designers. Right. As you are. 
Well, thank you. <laughs> That's very We nice. had a conversation with Greta Kessler. Thank you very much, thank Greta. Thank you for having me here. And thank you for joining us. Uh, this is the Deerfield Arts Bank. I'm Jane Treger, and the show is Talking Art. Thank you for being with us, and see you next time.